Kuligin says, uh, I've been married to you for seven years. He laughs. But it seems as if we were married yesterday. Word of honor. No, really, you are an amazing woman. I'm content. I am content. I am content. Now he says three times, I am content. I am content. I'm content. And if you read the play, he says to her in the end, be quiet, Marsha, I'm here, I'll take care of you, as you will suffer because you love the Shemin. And I think what he says, I will always be here, Marsha, as light hits you. I'm contented with that. It's very much like somebody says, all right, you'll be a bad girl, but uh, you know, mother says, all right, scream, but don't, I mean, I'll you, and I'll watch. <laughs> Do you understand? It's almost as if he's a nurse to her. Do you understand? Yeah. And I think you have to fill it with, Masha will always need care. Always. And that is what he, as a husband, can give her. So he never, never, never criticizes her. Is that clear? Now he knows that she's in love, he sees that she's in love, he understands what she needs and lets her do it and have it. Therefore you can interpret uh, the husband and his own pattern of life, which is to be extremely clear about things. And uh, now Masha says it's dreadful what is happening to our brother. Now, she's the only one that says, it is dreadful, it is so dreadful. I, it's so shocking. And he says, but you mustn't worry, Masha. He has, he has mortgaged the house, but you don't have to worry, but I'll take care of you. You don't need to worry. The girls maybe have to worry, but you don't have to worry. He says, I am not poor, I work, I go to school. I give private lessons. I'm an honest man. I'm a simple man. And Marcia says, I don't need what you're giving me. I don't need anything. Injustice makes me furious. He's offering her a guaranteed uh, the rent. And she says, I don't need these things now, of course, you understand how they are uh, unaware of, uh, of the laundry and that thing. He, he especially makes that you understand that what he's offering her is what mostly the man that goes to Scarsdale offers this actress when she goes there and finally she says, I don't need Scarsdale. The uh, Scarsdale is full of women that don't need it. And most women begin to know now the other thing of what they need. I just want you to know that it is not possible to give Masha anything. Uh, okay, and now I think Irina says something. You want to hear the Russian? No, I want to say it first. I know, but we don't start with him. So you now go to what is uh, somebody tells you about. Now, it is called, in, in Russian, it's called the messenger who comes and delivers the message. So you should know about the person uh, in advance, yes? Now, you remember these techniques that we sh I told you about the messenger and the complaint and the bearing your soul, yes? and uh, some other very important things. I hope you wrote them down and tell me what I said. Uh, anyway, she really gives you Andre. Now, if you see Andre in the... Now, you will see him when he comes in, but she says, what marriage has done to him? Marrying out of, out of caste. 
Now, if you've ever worked on Miss Julie, you see what he does to Miss Julie as she comes in and she's completely without being able to say, but I, you are a thief, you see, I'm not. I'm not a thief. And he says, what's bad about stealing? All right. She says he has now really uh, done something. He has mortgaged the house away. He has done everything away because he has lost his, uh, the principles with which he was brought up. And so you see that Irene says, he's become so small, he has dried up. He's aged beside this woman. There was a time when he was preparing for, for the professorship, and yesterday he was bragging about being a member of the district board. Now, he's a member of the district board. The man who is the leader of the district board is sleeping with his wife. Probably the child that he has in the fourth act is not his. And he has now, you know, he's been cuckolded. Everybody knows and points to him. And everybody rushes to the fire. But he sits in his room and he doesn't pay any attention. What does he do? He says, she says, he just plays the violin. And I suppose if that's all he does, then it's awful, she says. It's just awful. It's awful. It's so awful that what he has become in the marriage is so awful. And this tune, this plaintive tune, this cry in the night of a soul that's been ravaged and he's lost himself, and this m tune that he keeps playing, and this is, she says, what will, and she does what Chekhov lets her do, and remember, there is one thing that you must make up your mind about. He says it's more biblical to knock your head against the wall. It's biblical than saying, Oh, there's an answer in science for you. Just take six lessons with Madame Lozanga, and they will give you uh, exactly what you need. When their answers are not in this way, then the other way of doing it is to submit. And that's what uh, the doctor does. Uh, how many people uh, see in uh, the doctor in each play submits uh, in the in the in the seagull? The doctor doesn't say a word. He just doesn't cry out. He does what is the other side of Chekhov, which says life wears you out. There's no way of uh, preventing that. Are you interested? Yeah. Okay. Life either wears you out. And while doing it, maybe, you sometimes get a fight when you're young. But when you're older, you uh, stop fighting. Now, this is where she says, and it's biblical, cast me out. Now, that's not English anymore, is it? Cast me out. In other words, you say that, I think, in the Bible. I have, I'm screaming, you, I, I mean, it's, it's, Tribal, isn't it? Yeah. See, Chekhov says it's tribal. He says it is so big, it is so atavistic in man to scream out, and that it was always done, the all through, and man still has in him this absolute biblical sense of leave me out, I must go somewhere that is throughout the ages, it will be there. Okay.